In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. And brothers and sisters, that we may worthily celebrate together the sacred mysteries, we call to mind the need for the forgiveness of our sins and beg God's mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us for our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. Attend to the pleas of your people with heavenly care, O Lord, we pray, that we may see what, we must, what must be done and so gain strength to do what we have seen. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. It was not to angels that God subjected the world to come, of which we are speaking. Instead, someone has testified somewhere. What is man that you are mindful of him? Or the son of man that you care for him? You made him for a little while lower than the angels. You crowned him with glory and honor, subjecting all things under his feet. In subjecting all things to him, he left nothing not subject to him. Yet at present, we do not see all things subjected to him, but we do see Jesus crowned with glory and honor because he suffered death. He, who for a little while was made lower than the angels, that by the grace of God, he might taste death for everyone. For it was fitting that he, for whom and through whom all things exist, in bringing many children to glory, should make the leader of their salvation perfect through suffering. He who consecrates and those who are being consecrated all have one origin. Therefore, he is not ashamed to call them brothers, saying, I will proclaim your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly, I will praise you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You have given your son ruler over the works of your hands. You have given your son rule over the works of your hands. O oh Lord, our Lord, how glorious is your name over all the earth. What is man that you should be mindful of him, or the son of man that you should care for him? You have given your son rule over the works of your hands. You have made him little less than the angels and crowned him with glory and honor. You have given him rule over the works of your hands, putting all things under his feet. You have given your son rule over the works of your hands. All sheep and oxen, yes, and the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fishes of the sea, and whatever swims the paths of the seas. You have given your son rule over the works of your hands. Mind your lips and your heart that you may worthily proclaim the gospel of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Alleluia, alleluia. Receive the word of God, not as the word of men, but as it truly is, the word of God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus came to Pernum with his followers, and on the Sabbath he entered the synagogue and taught. The people were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. In their synagogue was a man with an unclean spirit. He cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked him and said, Quiet, come out of him. The unclean spirit convulsed him and with a loud cry came out of him. All were amazed and asked one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even unclean spirits, and they obey him. His fame spread everywhere throughout the whole region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christology, a big sound and word, but quite simply means the study of Jesus Christ, Christology. And uh, when we study Jesus, we know that he had two natures. He was both human, and then he was, of course, divine. So his humanity and his divinity are the poor, two core important parts of any kind of Christology. And many of the ways that teachers of Christology like to make the points of regard to either humanity or divinity is to say Jesus had a Christology from above, a high Christology, meaning he was strongly divine, or he experienced a Christology from below, once again getting in touch with the earth part, the humanity part of his nature. So what happens in our scriptures today, especially our first lesson from the book of the Hebrews, is the author of the scriptures was doing a Christological study, getting in touch with Jesus Christ. And in fact, we can say the whole letter to the Hebrews is a Christological work. And interestingly enough, it's a pretty balanced approach to Jesus in terms of his two natures, human and divine. And sometimes you can say in the letter to the Hebrews that it's very uh, from above, but there are other times when it appears to be from below. It gives, once again, that uh, medium or balanced state of Jesus and his two natures. It's interesting that we experience this letter to the Hebrews now just off the heels, just a few days away from Christmas season. We completed Christmas season this past Sunday. And we got in touch with studying Jesus in terms of his incarnation, his uh, humanity, God coming to earth in the form of a little bitty child. So the church is saying to us, don't forget to keep on contemplating, to keep reflecting upon Jesus and his both divinity and in his humanity. After all, all you're doing is a Christological study
And let us rise to offer our prayer of the faithful. Jesus invites us to follow him, and so we turn our hearts and minds to the Father to present our petitions. For Pope Francis, bishops, priests, and deacons, may the Holy Spirit enkindle the fire of his love in their hearts as they preach the good news. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the world, may the Lord have mercy on the suffering and trials of all people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are so deeply affected by the coronavirus and its resulting social, economic, and physical destruction, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this community of believers, may the Lord defend us from the influence of evil. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died marked with the sign of faith, may they be reunited in glory with Christ, our Savior and brother. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Mighty God, as you once heard the prayers of your son Jesus, so now hear our petitions, which we ask through him, the same, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and the work of human hands to become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and the work of human hands to become for us our spiritual drink. away my iniquities. And cleanse me from my sins. Sisters and brothers, pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May your people's oblation, Lord, find favor with you, we pray, so that it may restore us to holiness and obtain what we devoutly entreat through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. It is our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ the Lord. In him you have been pleased to renew all things, giving us a share in his fullness. For though he was in the form of God, Christ emptied himself by the blood of his cross and brought peace to all creation. Therefore, he has been exalted above all things, and to all who obey him, he has become the source of salvation. And so now with the angels and archangels, with the thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and the powers of heaven, we too proclaim the hymn of your glory as without end together we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. For at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread, and giving you thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving you thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of, the, of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by your Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Mitchell our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with her blessed spouse, St. Joseph, with the blessed apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by his divine teachings, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not unto temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may, be, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. 
have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Humbly we ask you, Lord God Almighty, be graciously pleased to grant that those you have renewed with your sacraments may also serve you with lives pleasing to you. Through Christ our Lord, amen. And for those who might have some minutes or some hours to help with the undecorating of the church this morning, um, it'd be very much appreciated. And thanks to the group that's helped to organize the undecorating of the church from Christmas. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.